On today's show, we break down my first Dallas Cowboys seven-round mock draft of the offseason. Two important notes here. The Sims are broken. Uh, I like the PFN Sim for the players. They don't have comp picks, though. So I wanted to do the PFF Sim for the comp picks, but they don't have the actual traded picks factored in. Like, they have the Cowboys with a fourth-round pick. They don't have one. And they have players who are not in the draft as well. So I kind of I merged the two to make it a more complete, accurate sim as to the best of my abilities. But it's January. They're, they are all broken. So before we get to my picks, what is your confidence level in the Dallas Cowboys drafting abilities? Scale it for me from 1 to 10 in the comments section. Now, in addition to the big names off the board, some other players off the board before you pick at number 24 overall. Marius Mims is gone. A Bama run, Dallas Turner, J.C. Latham, Kool-Aid McKinstry, and Brian Thomas Jr., who would be a very fun fit at wide receiver for you. Now, my pick in round one, I'm going offensive line here. Give me Jordan Morgan, the tackle out of Arizona, who I think can be your left tackle of both the present and the future. If you want to keep Tyron Smith, great, that's fine. But it is time to look into ways and, and investing uh, into statuses where you, you invest in the left tackle spot. You can no longer set yourself up to saying, oh, we're going to, fingers crossed that Tyron Smith stays healthy. It's a bad idea. Morgan for Arizona this year was really good. Two sacks, one hit. 13 hurries allowed, a 77 run blocking grade. You can, you can go guard here too and put Tyler Smith at left tackle. That's fine. I think you spend the best pick on the line if the board falls properly. Put one at left tackle, put one at left guard. What was nice, by the way, for this pick, there were several other guys I considered. I actually kind of made it a, a tough decision in the end. Keon Coleman was there at wide receiver. I like his game, bigger body. Uh, two guys that'll probably kick inside in the NFL. Troy Fontenu, left tackle at Washington, probably going to play left guard. You can flip those two, same end result. Graham Barton, probably going to play center in the NFL, but you need a center. Stay tuned on that. Teaser alert. Let me cook. Byron Murphy, defensive tackle from Texas, more of a three technique, be a fun fit. Also, there's Tyler Guyton, and, uh, more of an upside pick than I think Morgan's more of a finished product right now. Maybe Guyton could be better, but I'm also trying to win right now. So I'm kind of balancing that a little bit. I would not be mad at really any of these picks in round one. There should be some quality players on the board for you. So with that in mind, who do you want to draft in round one this year? It'll be the pinned comment on today's video. So if the ad comes here on YouTube, take advantage of it. Let me know who you want the Cowboys to take in the 2024 NFL Draft. All right, notable guys on the board here, too, uh, off the board. Your pick 56, 12 picks for that. Tyler Guyton fell. So maybe you could have flipped it and traded it up there. Either way, Kalen King off the board at 50. Devondre Sweat at 51. I'd have thought about it. You don't need two nose guards, but I like it more than Mozzie. Jalen Polk, thought about that one a lot, too. Eagles, sniped two good players there, benefit having a second pick from the Saints. Makai Wingo, one pick before you, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to go two offensive linemen. Give me Jackson Powers Johnson out of Oregon. He played all over line at Oregon, all but left tackle, had snaps at four spots. He would be your new center. And I wouldn't even be mad if you went full Tyler Biotish and took him at the back end of round one, maybe in a, in a, in a trade down scenario. But I have fixed my offensive line. Now it's premium investments, make no mistake. But, and the Oregon offense was kind of fake, where it was a lot, a lot of quick game. He allowed one hurry in pass protection. That was it. Uh, I, I, 85.2 run blocking grade, again, all per PFF. So now I've got my left side of the line locked in. TJ Bass can now work as a right guard behind Zach Martin to take over. And hopefully Terrence Steele gets back to full form. You couldn't run the ball on offense this year. Two new offensive linemen starting could very well help you do that. There were some other players I did strongly consider. Uh, Xavier Worthy out of Texas. You want a speedy receiver, there you go. Patrick Paul is a good lineman from Houston. Uh, Edrin Cooper was the top linebacker. Also, Jeremiah Trotter was still there too. I nearly went linebacker, and frankly, I probably would have if JPJ did not fall down to me in the second round. Also, 
it would be very on brand for the Cowboys to take Jonathan Brooks uh, in the second round. Uh, that would be a, a very classic Cowboys thing to do. Take the injured running back because they love those blue star special guys in the second round. I'll make that a Kalen Carson too. I kind of like him as a, as a Wake Forest corner, but I was looking lineman, linebacker, running back there in the second round. Again, draft gets weird. Players do tend to fall. Now, today's show is made possible by Prize Picks. This is daily fantasy made easy. Even though the NFL season is over, you can still do daily fantasy on Prize Picks. You can also do NBA daily fantasy as well, which I'll probably dap or put my toe in a little bit here once we the regular season ends. Here is my conference championship game, Prize Picks slate. I'm doing the all in. I like the flex play, but when I do the freebie for Isaiah Pacheco, I like to go all in. That's a half receiving yard for him. The, the goblin lower payout, but just kind of juice it a little bit there. Gus Edwards, more than yards on the ground. Sam Laporta, more than receiving yards. Brock Purdy, more than passing yards. That's it for me a couple weeks now in a row. Go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. Links in the comment section and the description of today's show. That's prizepicks.com dot com slash c l n s again that link is in the comment section and the description of today's video all right third round uh some notable names off the board here rook uh row row out of clemson it's a fun name also a good player javon board out of georgia you guys know how i like my safeties uh the Notre Dame linebacker tory horton out of colorado state good receiver brayden fisk a good defensive lineman off the board here and you're probably going to get mad at me for, for this next pick. You probably will because of where he went to school. But let me explain. It's Junior Colson out of Michigan. A, they love their Michigan players. B, he actually is what you're looking for at linebacker. You want someone who can stop the run and who isn't a liability in coverage. That is what Junior Colson has been pretty much his entire time at Michigan. His numbers actually dipped a little bit this past season to only 95 tackles. Now, he only had two TFLs. His average tackle depth wasn't perfect, but he was consistently around the ball, and he's bigger. He's listed at 6'3", 247. If you want a starting caliber linebacker in the third round, here you go. I will make note, I, I, I wanted Cooper, I wanted, I wanted Trotter. They went off the board kind of in that late second, early third round range. Um, I, I know it's Michigan. I know that's going to bother you. If you take away the helmet, he actually is a very good fo football player. Uh, so I know, I know that, that, that that is a, a, a uh, trigger trauma alert, but he is good. And maybe you go linebacker earlier and it's fine anyway. Uh, others on the board here, I really thought about going Trey Benson. Uh, but to be honest, I'm not far enough into my draft study to find a later mid-day three linebacker the way I could find a day three running back. Uh, I, I, I like Benson a lot. That would that, that, have been a home run pick here. Um, Blake Corm, running back from Michigan. Jamari Thrash, who I think is an underrated receiver prospect. Mason Smith had some first-round buzz, kind of fell apart there. Malachi Corey, or Corley is kind of a... Everyone wants, everyone wants the, the new Debo, right? He's got some Debo-esque qualities there out of Western Kentucky. So be honest with me, and, and you can hate it if you want to. That is totally fine. I, I get it. Can you handle another Michigan draft pick? Y for yes, N for no. Vote and vent if you need to in the comment section. Remember, no fourth round pick, so we're into the fifth round projected comp picks here. The running backs kind of all went away. Uh, that was not great. I'm going to go with Ray Davis out of Kentucky. Now, He's probably going to be a, a one-contract player. Uh, because, for example, his uh, Braylon Allen's four years would be up, and he'd be younger than Ray Davis. Ray Davis is, is pretty old. But he does fit the style of what you need. Uh, 3.8 yards per carry on the ground, after contact on the ground. Had his best year, admittedly older, um, at Kentucky against SEC competition. 5.7 Yards per carry. No, 4.5 yards per carry at Vanderbilt. Uh, was it Temple as well? He is an older prospect, but if you want the power back, this is how you get one. 
He's only going to be a, 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 a one-year uh, contract player, most likely. That is okay in the fifth round. That's not going to be a third-round pick. And the running backs were kind of all gone. Some players you might have heard of who were on the board, Jaheim Bell. I want to him. He's fun. Uh, this is like a uh, fullback, running back, tight end, weird hybrid guy that's a lot of fun there. Uh, Jalen Harrell out of Michigan to trigger you guys even more. Mayan Williams kind of fits a similar mold. I kind of I think Tyron Harper is a fun or Hopper's a fun piece at linebacker. In hindsight, maybe would have done that route and taken uh, Trey Benson, but you know, linebacker, so can't fill all my needs at once here. Uh, Dominique Lovett, it could be a better pro than he was college player out of Georgia. Now, we will have plenty of Cowboys NFL draft videos for you here on the channel, so make sure you are subscribed. YouTube.com slash at Cowboys TV. My round six pick here, number 212, again, a comp pick, is my favorite pick I made. Uh, Sione Vaki out of Utah, who was a two-way player for the Utes. Yeah, he played both safety and... And he played running back, which was super duper fun uh, this past year. Probably going to play DB in the NFL. I don't know if he's actually going to see in the sixth, but screw it. It's fun. 51 tackles, eight TFLs, an interception as well, two pass breakups. And then because Utah was so decimated by injuries at running back, they're like, screw it. Let's try this guy. And it worked. He had 42 carries. 317 yards on the ground, 11 catches for 203 yards and five scores. They were doing like handoffs and like wildcat uh, reps as well because they were just so banged up on offense and it worked. Now, I don't think he's going to play running back for you in the NFL, but screw it. Why not? You know, J. Ron Curse is, is a free agent. No, I might not have him back. Maybe you keep Marquise Bell as a dime linebacker in the end. And it, on day three, being able to play safety and running back, that screams, didn't play a lot in college, screams he can be a core special teamer for you. And when you're out to the top 200 picks, that's a fine thing to end up getting in the end. What is the biggest need for the Cowboys? Can't say ownership or coach. Talking positional needs, because it's probably one of those two. But go vote for me in the comments right now. All right, the seventh round and... As I went through my day three picks, I'm like, oh boy, you, you can feel just the, the lack of back-end talent because of the, the extra COVID years and NIL stuff, the smallest junior class uh, in a long time in the NFL. The, the depth is not great, uh, so I'm, I'm forcing some picks here. I'm going to go Nathaniel Watson out of Mississippi State, six-year college football player. He's old. Did get home on some blitzes, though. Solid size. He had 10 sacks this year, six in 2022. Bunch of TFLs around the football consistently. Uh, you know, might be more of an early down linebacker or can blitz on third downs. If you have Dan Quinn, he fits that mold, too, certainly. Again, seventh round, no such thing as a bad pick. The seventh round, a last name you will remember or know. It's McCaffrey. Luke McCaffrey. Yeah, it's Christian's brother, by the way. Uh, tried to make it as a quarterback at first, was at Nebraska, and then at Rice. Eventually moved to wide receiver, and he played pretty well. Is a bigger body slot receiver. Also got involved on some uh, carries this past year, but almost 1,000 yards playing for Rice. 13 touchdowns as well through the air. Again, seventh round. It's not a lot of great options on the board here, but if you want some more competition for receiver a decent path to pursue if you are Dallas. All right, to recap here, Jordan Morgan in round one, Jackson Powers Johnson in round two. I got the best available linebacker uh, in the third round in Junior Colson. I know that is going to traumatize some of you. I get it. And then day three, it's a thin day three group. I don't love my options there. Ray Davis from Kentucky, uh, Sione Baki out of Utah, who's a fun two-way player. Nathaniel Watson, some more linebacker depth than Luke McCaffrey out of Rice at wide receiver. So grade the seven-round Cowboys mock draft. A, B, C, D, or F. Go vote for me in the comments right now.